welcome back to the next episode of What's Up Prof. Hello, Walter. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm well, and you? This is a new year. Yeah? Yes. Well, Happy New Year to you. Well, I don't I, know how, what I, is going to... It's going to be exciting, <laughs> but how happy it's going to be, I don't know. <laughs> I'll open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are living in very serious times, and we can only bear through this if you help us. We ask you to bless us in this discussion and also enlighten our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So maybe I'd just like to put a disclaimer when, for when we start this. It might become a lengthy um, discussion, and we don't want to split this one in two. No. So, if so why don't we speak at double speed? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so there's a few options for the viewers. They can watch it at double speed, or they can either all um, they can also pause it and watch it later, or continue. But we don't want to sp split this one up. Yes, so and uh, maybe it doesn't become so long no. after all. We don't know. It's so just for it depends English. how it goes. Yeah. Yes, it's a very provocative title to vax or not to vax. But before we even go there, 2021 has a lot of potential, doesn't it? Yes. And it started off with a, <laughs> with a bang. <laughs> and uh, we've just had major riots at the Capitol building where the decision is to be felled whether the next president is going to be the old president or the new president. Yeah. And people have been shot and it's, uh, it's, it's a very serious issue that is going on. And Mike Pence has been put into the firing line. And I'm sure some parties are pleased and some parties are not so pleased. But uh, fortunately, we are prophecy people. Yes. And we are looking at this not from the standpoint of a party affiliation. We are looking at the prophetic picture. So... This is very fascinating. And then the elections in Georgia, mm -hmm. whether uh, they were rigged or whether they were not rigged, why did the power go off when Trump was in the lead and then come back on when he was no longer in the lead? And oh, there are so many stories out there and so much anger yeah. and frustration. So that's the one side of the story. And then, of course, mixed into this story is this great divide where people are saying, our hopes are centered in Trump for the draining of the swamp. Mm -hmm. And the other side is saying there is no swamp. <laughs> There's only a, a global yeah. village. So it's, it's fascinating to watch how this unfolds. So let's see where prophecy leads us. And then we have a few other things that are happening this mm. year which are exceedingly significant in terms of the prophetic picture. Yes. And that is that in March, as we discussed before, there will be the celebration of the giving of the Sunday law uh, by Constantine. Yeah. The th thousand seven year jubilee. The jubilee. The, you know, they love jubilees, these people. And they always work in these jubilee cycles. And uh, they will be celebrating this and trade unions will be involved and they will be saying, we want this legislation to be reinstated. And then the ecumenical council. The healing of the wound between Catholicism and Protestantism. And also in this year, mm. in April, will be the commemoration again, the 500th year mm. of the excommunication of Martin Luther. And what can we expect from that event? I am waiting with anticipation. Is Pope Francis going to reverse the excommunication yeah. to heal the wound? As some of these Protestant leaders and some of the Lutheran leaders, especially from the Scandinavian countries that are very Lutheran, mm. 
have said that the Roman church is the mother church. The mother church. It, you know. Is the wound going to be healed in this year? And can we see exciting events? Well, exciting, definitely. And in the mix, you have a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And there's a health crisis in the world. Mm -hmm. And there is a solution to the health crisis, depending on which side of the fence you are sitting in this issue, right? And the vaccinations have become part of this deal. And some people say, this is a plot by the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are saying, no, this is a real issue that has to be addressed. So we have two views clashing. Yeah. And it's sort of a mirror of what's happening at the, at the, at the Capitol at the moment. Yeah, at every level, actually, it's just the same mirror. Yes. We've got these two opposites in we've, everything. We've got two sides that are in absolute violent conflict it, yeah and now you have to choose sides and who's going to take which side mm. and that's what we're talking about here so it's not just the question of to vax or not to vax it is a much deeper issue mm -hmm. finally it will determine the direction in which your mind will be channeled mm. So let us talk about some of these issues and see what this year brings. Now, we're still going to talk about the prophetic issues yes. later, but this is pivotal for the moment. Correct. And people have already chosen sides. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the rhetoric is, is powerful, even violent in some cases. Yes. To the point where people say that if you do not see it this way or that way, mm -hmm. you need to be exterminated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you're a it's danger a to society. Yeah. They've said if you are an anti-vaxxer, then basically you are a murderer. Yes. Yes, you should, so be, you should be prosecuted for murder or manslaughter. I mean, this is how far this issue has gone. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important to see what where is... The, what is, what is Brewing. Fine. So, shall we jump right into it? Please. To vax or not to vax? Well, I think it was in 2019 already, Boris Johnson had a speech at the United Nations where he was talking about some of this new technology and science and how important this new technology and science is to humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to compare some of these things just to put it into context. So let's just listen to what he had to say before the epidemic. And there are today people who are still actually anti-science. A whole movement called the anti-vaxxers who refuse to acknowledge the evidence that vaccinations have eradicated smallpox and who by their prejudices are actually endangering the very children they want to protect. And I totally reject this anti-scientific pessimism. I'm profoundly optimistic about the ability of new technology to serve as a liberator and to remake the world wondrously and benignly. Indeed, in countless respects, technology is already doing just that, nanotechnology, I mentioned earlier, revolutionizing medicine by designing robot, robots a fraction of the size of a red blood cell capable of swimming through our bodies, dispensing medicine and attacking malignant cells like some Star Wars armada. Neural interface technology is producing a new generation of cochlear implants allowing the gift of hearing to people who would otherwise not be able to hear the voices of their own children. A London technology company has worked out how to help the blind to navigate more freely with nothing more than an app on their smartphones. New technologies produced in Britain, helping the deaf to hear and the blind to see. And we used to think that printing was something that you did to run off a boarding card. Now a British company has used 3D printing to make an engine capable of blasting a rocket in space. In 
African countries, millions of people without bank accounts can now transfer money using a simple app. They can buy solar energy and leap in one transaction from no electricity to green power. And new advances are making renewable energy ever cheaper, aiding our common struggle against climate change. Our understanding of the natural world is being transformed by genome sequencing, the discovery of the very essence of life itself, the secret genetic code that animates the spirit of every living being and allows medical breakthroughs the like of which we have never known. Treatments tailored to the precise genetic makeup of the individual. So far, we have discovered the secrets of less than 0.3% of complex life on the planet. Think what will we achieve, what we will achieve when, and it is a matter of when we understand one or two percent, let alone five or 10%. But how, how we design the emerging technologies behind these breakthroughs and what values inform their design will shape the future of humanity. And that is my point to you tonight, my friends. That was a mouthful. Yeah. So already before the pandemic, he was referring to anti-vaxxers. Mm -hmm. And he was condemning them in no uncertain terms. Yes. Not only that, he told us about technology where you have robots smaller than the size of a, red, of a red blood, blood corpuscle coursing through your body, delivering medication to the precise loci where it is necessary. And then he talked about AI and all these marvelous interface uh, inventions that are there and the great, wonderful future for humanity. Now, Martin, does that uh, gel with what the Bible is saying about the future of humanity? No. If I read the Bible correctly, it says that everything will be going down. <laughs> and we will be having some chaos, yes. right? <clears throat> now, you know what? I, I'm a scientist, and I love science. I've always loved science. There's nothing wrong with science. Science is a, a beautiful tool that enables us to understand nature. But if science is not in harmony with the Word of God, then mm. it is a false science. Yes. And the philosophy behind it is then a very dangerous philosophy because it leads you away from the truth and not towards the mm -hmm. truth. Rightly understood, science must be in harmony with God's word. Yeah. Correct? 100%. Now, that is quite a divide, especially in the evolutionary world and mm -hmm. what have you. But the technology is available yeah. to absolutely use nanotechnology, micro-robots to do all kinds of things. Now, technology... Is it always a case that it is being used for good? No, unfortunately, that's where the problem comes in. So if you, if you discover nuclear technology and you can power the whole world mm -hmm. and give everybody electricity, that's marvelous. Yes. But could you use that same power to obliterate humanity? Yes. I see. So it all depends in whose hands this power mm -hmm. is lodged, right? Correct. And... Do you always know whom you can trust in this kind of scenario? No. And unfortunately, I think we can go as far as, as to say, as long as it stays in humanity's hands, yes. it's dangerous. Correct. Now, this was not all that he was talking about in that speech. Mm. He also, in that speech, spoke about how this technology can be used to control, mm. right? Yes. Now we won't be dealing with that in this in this lecture. We'll put that into a future lecture. But there is the issue of the power and the technology, and then there is the issue of the control. Yes. How you can use it to control humanity? Yeah. He actually, in the speech th that we'll be using in the next one, refers to how it can be used for good or for bad. Exactly. Mm. Let us just read a quote 
from the spirit of prophecy. The Lord desires his church to be a perfect body. Not all arms, not all body without arms, but body and arms together, every member working as one great whole. As the right arm is connected with the body, so the health reform and medical missionary work is connected with the third angel's message and is to work efficiently as the right arm for the defense of the body of truth. Mm. So there is a health message which has to work together with the truth. Yes. Is it possible that there is an alternative health message mm -hmm. that can work on the other side? The devil always copies what the Lord has given. So does he have a right arm to his message? I believe he has. And did Boris just tell us that this medical breakthrough that we are seeing in the world is the way to go? Mm -hmm. The medical world is going to decide how you should run your body. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now, does the medical world have problems with naturopathy? Yes. Yes they, and no. There are many yes. that say, okay, we have to go the natural route. But when it comes down to the line, mm. then the medical route, the allopathic route, is the method of mm -hmm. choice. Now, we've had this discussion before. Uh, there are these three approaches, right? Mm -hmm. You have allopathy, uh, fighting fire with water. Yeah. <laughs> you have homeopathy, fighting fire with fire. And then you have naturopathy, giving your body everything that it needs to cope with the issue by itself. Mm. In fact, nobody can really heal you. The body has built-in mechanisms to heal itself. Yeah. You can enhance the mechanism of healing or create the circumstances for the body to heal itself. You've just had a shoulder operation, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's why your arms are so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sitting so still. <laughs> You're sitting so still. So <laughs> this is not normal, but... <laughs> 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 but uh, they've actually put muscles you into their right place again, mm -hmm. etc. But did they heal you instantly or did they create the circumstances for your body, body to heal it? Yes, the body has to heal itself. Exactly. So all of these medical issues have their place. So the natural way, naturopathy, should, in my opinion, be your first choice. Mm. Then you must decide after that whether you want to go the allopathy way or the homeopathy way. We're not going to go into the issue. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have a bug that is going to kill you, then it would be wise to kill the bug before it kills you. Mm -hmm. That's where things like antibiotics come in. That's allopathy, right? Yeah. So that is fine. And we can use the medical world when it is rightly understood and does not come into conflict with God's word and mm -hmm. God's natural ways. Yes. So let's have a look at this issue of COVID-19. And there's, there's so much division in mm -hmm. the world. So we'll have to be very careful how we state this, right, yeah. Martin? We just state what's going on there and then people can decide. Exactly. So here's Times Now news. Researchers introduced the first artificial intelligence tool to detect COVID-19 probability. So here's this research company that has developed AI COVID software. So here we're talking about this union between technology and the medical world. Yes. Nine months into the pandemic, we now have a better understanding of how to care for patients with COVID-19, but there's still a big bottleneck in COVID-19 diagnosis with PCR testing. So this team believes that a secondary benefit of laboratories incorporating AI COVID might be reduced time for traditional PCR results. So there's no doubt that... Uh, technology and medicine are merging mm, in true. the time that we are living in. 
So is it possible to introduce medicine and technology simultaneously? Yes, definitely. It's definitely possible, mm. right? And depending on whether you trust the individuals that deliver it, you must make a decision whether you will allow it or not, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. You have to have a choice. You have to have a choice. Yeah. Now, where lies this choice? With yourself. Are you sure? Well, unfortunately, it's supposed to. Or is it, uh, is it somebody that will decide for you how you must choose? Mm, that's where we're heading. This is what this talk is about. This talk is about who makes the choice. And we have to be very clear on mm -hmm. this issue. So here's an article from the Washington Post. Smart pills with chips, cameras and robotic past raise legal and ethical questions. So already this technology is being used. Yeah, and it was, this is from 2014. This is 2014. So here they had smart pills and went into your stomach and monitored what was going on there and sent you a report on your computer, etc., etc. And this was still at a scale which wouldn't be at the microscopic scale. But as Boris told us, we're heading that way. Yes. So let's say that you could integrate AI with this robotic system or preloaded um, nano robots, then you could target certain organs. Mm. Could it be used, for example, to deliver drugs that would calm you down? Yes. Or switch off your thinking capacity maybe or your whatever yeah. <laughs> calm you down it's possible it's right possible. depending on who the is, intention is doing it and what the intention is so let's look at the vaccination issue we've had a lot of propaganda and many many articles from scientists mm -hmm. from religious organizations from even the creation organizations in this world. Mm. And they are taking their stand as to which way we should go. Now here's an article by Robert Carter, and it's from creation.com, Creation Ministries International. And he is speaking on behalf of the vaccination. And he's talking about RNA vaccines. Harnessing God's design to help prevent sickness, but will the new vaccine technology alter our DNA? Now, this is a creation scientist. Mm -hmm. Could an RNA vaccine alter your DNA? Even though the wild version of the virus used in the AstraZeneca vaccine can also do this, it is not known to cause any diseases. Even so, the RNA contains but one or two protein-coding genes. This is not enough information to do anything in the cell. Any cell that takes up the foreign protein gene will be killed by the immune system. At least that is what it is what's supposed to happen and indeed is what does happen in nearly all cases. It's very careful, right? Yeah. In nearly all cases. The immune system is exceptionally complex and we cannot say that every single person will respond in the same way. But if this is a concern, it should be a concern for all viral infections as well. Well, to an extent he has a point here because viruses enter your body and bring with it protein and DNA and messenger RNA. Mm. So the vaccine will do the same thing. But the vaccine also has different technology which enables it to do things that naturally might not be the case. Mm. The arms, muscles are far from the gonads. So even if some cells incorporate the RNA in the form of DNA into their genomes, it will be difficult to pass this to the next generation. Again, nobody can say it is impossible, but there is little reason for considering it to be probable. Then again, we have sometimes been surprised by biology. So he's saying, don't worry about it. It's possible, but not probable. And we have a pandemic after all. We need to do something, right? 
Considering all these points together as a scientist with a strong background in genetics, I believe the risk of the genetic engineering of people is extremely small. Thus not sufficient to warrant halting these vaccine trials. We can always be surprised, but everything we do know tells us that the new technology should be safe. Thus the goal is to study this new idea until every significant concern has been addressed. After that, we can proceed cautiously while reassessing every serious concern at each step. Now, let me go back to Boris. He said, we know 1%, 2%. Mm -hmm. But if we really get with it, we might know 5%, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> How much is then lacking? <laughs> <laughs> yes, between 98% and 95%. Exactly. In other words, will we ever discover in its fullness the intricacies of God's creation? No. We will be studying this for all eternity. For all eternity. Isn't that correct? Yeah, correct. If I may just comment on this last sentence. The problem that I just have is that, yes, we can check out all of this and so on, but who's it being checked out on? So after, we can, after that, we can proceed cautiously to look back on what has happened and then address it. But unfortunately, this... You become the guinea pig. You're the guinea pig. So then we have to look back in five years' time and, oh, shucks, it, there's a problem there. All right. So... You know, I'm also a scientist, and I also have a background in genetics. And I used to be an evolutionist, and now I am a creationist. And this man is also a creationist. And he says there is a very, very small probability that it will be incorporated into your genome. So it's not genetic engineering. You're just using the messenger RNA. But uh, it's not like that in all cases. Yes. But you know what? If you consider what the evolutionary scientists are saying about how our genome came together in the first place, mm. then it is the exact opposite of what is being said here. Because the idea is that uh, bacteria and viruses in the past came into the body and like mitochondria, for example, it is assumed by the evolutionary world that mitochondria were organisms of not the body originally, mm. but became sort of symbiotic creatures within you, and that there was an exchange of DNA, and they still have their own DNA, but some of it became incorporated into the body, and that's how your genome eventually grew to what it is today. Mm. The DNA had to come from somewhere, right? right? So in their evolutionary thinking, they're incorporating all of this into your DNA, but now denying that it can be incorporated in yeah. your DNA. There's, there's, a, there's a problem there, yeah. right? So the reality and the philosophy are not gelling. Yes. So the philosophy is there because you have to find a way to explain how your genome grew to what it was. Mm. And the only way to explain that is that it was incorporated. But now when it comes to the vaccine, you have to say, no, it does not get incorporated. Yeah, because no, nobody wants to become genetically modified. Exactly. So this is a bit of an interesting discussion. But I'm not choosing sides yeah. yet. Just, just, that's why I mentioned it. It's just the statement that he made, if I look at it logically, and he says... This is in all probability not a dangerous thing. Yes. But we can in the future look back and see if there was a problem. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So here is MedCam Medical Lectures explained clearly as per YouTube channel. And it talks about the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines that use messenger RNA in their COVID-19 vaccines. This never-before-used technology could transform how science fights diseases. So let's have a look at what these people have to say so that we can get both sides of the story. Yes. Now, as you will recall, 
the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine are basically new vaccines in the sense that they are injecting messenger RNA into your cells to tell the cells to produce the protein that is the same as a portion of the spike protein on the virus, and that is what generates the immune response. So in other words, we're giving instructions to the cell to make the foreign protein, which causes the immune response. And that is actually very similar to the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, except instead of using messenger RNA, they are using DNA to do that. So once again, in terms of a picture, imagine we have the cell and we've got the nucleus. And what we were doing before was we were taking messenger RNA and that messenger RNA was being translated by ribosomes and converted into the protein. And what we did with the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine is we were getting the messenger RNA into the cytoplasm of the cell. The cytoplasm is the outside portion, as opposed to the nucleus. How do we get that messenger RNA in the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine in? Well, we used a lipid bilayer, or a micelle as we called it, to get those fragments or that messenger RNA into the cytoplasm. And then from there, it's fairly straightforward. The cell uses its own cell machinery, which is the ribosomes, to cause translation to occur, and you make the protein in question. How this is different is AstraZeneca uses a different technique, and it uses a virus called an adenovirus, but not a human one, but a chimpanzee. Now, the adenovirus here does not use RNA like we've been talking about. It uses DNA. And DNA is a double-stranded form of instructions. Now, there's a portion there in the middle of that that is used for replication of the virus. Well, the genetic engineers simply delete that portion so the virus can no longer replicate and cause an infection in the human body. And instead, they replace that portion of the DNA with the genetic code, the instructions that the geneticists have engineered. And so what happens when you deliver this adenovirus in the vaccine it goes into the cell and it releases the DNA into the cytoplasm. And then that gets taken up and goes into the nucleus. That DNA, according to scientists at AstraZeneca, does not get incorporated into the host's genome. It does not go into your DNA in the cell, but rather it is transcribed into RNA and that RNA then exits the nucleus as a messenger RNA, and then exactly the same thing happens as what we saw with the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, which is that the messenger RNA, which is now a product of the transcription of the DNA, gets converted into the spike protein through translation by the ribosomes, and then this goes on once again to cause the immunogenic response. Professor Crotty, the research from you and your team that's been featured in the New York Times and has been recently held up by Dr. Fauci at a congressional hearing has been key to our understanding about how our immune system reacts to this new coronavirus. mRNA um, does its work just in the cytoplasm of our cells. Is that correct? That's correct. So yeah, I've gotten lots of questions about, well, wait, isn't this genetic engineering? I don't want to be genetically engineered. And I'm like, well, fair enough. I don't want to be genetically engineered either. <laughs> um, but, but this is RNA. It's just messages. They're, they're transient, temporary. They don't become part of your body. Uh, it's, it's just not the same thing as DNA. Now, what about, speaking of DNA, the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine candidate that, that utilizes DNA? Yeah, so, um, and so both the AstraZeneca uh, approach and the Johnson & Johnson approach use um, a viral vector. Um, and it is a viral vector that contains DNA, but, but really it's, it's about the virus. So they're, they're using a different virus, an adenovirus, as a delivery system um, into your cells. Essentially, you know, sort of like giving you one viral infection to teach your immune system how to fight another viral infection. That's, that's also transient DNA. That doesn't become part of your DNA. That's, that's just the virus's DNA. And those viral vectors, they've been, they've been gutted um, so that they can't become another adenovirus. It's, it's, it's like taking a car 
and taking out the engine, you know, and uh, even and taking out the seats. Um, it still looks like a car from the outside, and you can put some new stuff in it, <laughs> and you're sort of showing that to the immune system to teach it what something looks like, but it's not going to go drive off on its own or anything. So according to the scientists, that DNA is not incorporated into your genome. Now according to the evolutionary scientists, how did the genome increase in the first place? Yeah. By incorporation, Evolution. right? So we have a clash of philosophies here. So they're pretty sure it doesn't get incorporated. But that DNA fraction goes into the nucleus and is actually transcribed. Mm. In other words, it's going to make messenger RNA, which is going to go to the cytoplasm, going to join up with the ribosome, and going to be transcribed into a protein. Mm. And that protein will then be transported to the outside of the cell, and there it will initiate the immune response. Mm because it will be recognized as a foreign protein and your immune system will take over. And any cell that produces that will eventually be destroyed because that's how the immune system works. But you've got millions and millions of millions of cells, so you know, mm. sacrifice a few <laughs> and then that's fine. What's interesting is that sometimes even messenger RNA it can be reverse transcribed and then it can end up in your DNA. Yes. Well, that's what uh, the AIDS virus does. Mm -hmm. There's a reverse transcription and it works backwards and splices itself in. And fragments of DNA can end up in your DNA. It is not probable that it will work and eventually it will be destroyed. So. They're saying it's perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. But you are playing with a genetic system yeah. that could possibly change you. And maybe just another interesting point for me personally. The scientists producing the vaccine says it's safe. It doesn't they say alter. It's safe. So now that I, is there going to be any other scientists that can check if that's true? Now, this is the whole point. In this debate, there are two sides. We referred to the pro-Trumpers and the, the anti-Trumpers, yeah. right? There are two sides. And they're, they're very passionate about what they believe. Mm -hmm. The same here. You have two sides. And they're very passionate about what, what they, they believe. believe. Now, just like these scientists that we've just watched are saying that it's perfectly safe, there are others that say that it's not perfectly safe. Yes. Now the media are giving which one's preference? Yeah, the ones that says it's safe. The ones that say that no, it's the safe. Other ones they so there is, a, there is a, a, a drive towards propagating one view as mm. opposed to another view. And then you have... Uh, all the watchdogs that will take down any video that says the opposite. Mm. Now, that is a system of control that worries me. Th so me what we're talking about here is not whether you are pro-vax or whether you are anti-vax. Anti it's the system of control that Correct. bothers me. It is um, silencing the other side. Do you have the right to make your own decision? Yes. Or well, must your decision be made for you? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. So here's a video, and the speaker here is Dr. Dolores, and she's using a paper that was published a few years ago, Immunization with SARS Coronavirus Vaccines Leads to Pulmonary Immunopathology on Challenge with the SARS Virus. So there are a number of authors and she has a few things to say which might interest us. Let's listen. The cytokine storm is that, um, so this is well known in many of the vaccinations. So I would just give you, these are slides that I prepared for the interviews I did in May. The cytokine storm is that when you put RNA uh, genes, you know, mRNA or um, vaccine, injected into your body, 
you bypass all of the natural immune response, which would build up an immune response to prevent the vaccine actually entering your body. Okay? So that suddenly the mRNA from the, the virus gets into your body and it uses the human machinery in the cells to express the human proteins. So that suddenly the virus has been injected into your body and then your immune system sees the virus in your body as something that should not be there and it mounts an immune response. But the shocking thing is that normally you're immune, you can get rid of the virus particles, you know, or you can do, it's a slow thing. But when you inject it, this mRNA, why it's so deadly is that it now has this, goes into your genes and starts expressing and it starts stimulating the immune response from inside your body. And it literally, you can't get rid of it because the source of the viral protein, you now become like a genetically modified organism and your body is expressing the virus protein. And so you're, you slowly, your immune system starts to try and get rid of it, but you're amounting this super, you know, beautiful, well, exquisite antibodies to get rid of it, but you never can because it's now part of who you are. It's integrated. And we now, the people getting this will become a genetically modified organism that will be making a virus protein as well as uh, their own human ones. So then when you naturally come across with, say, the coronavirus naturally or the RSV, as these children did, the virus you breathe it in and it goes on to your, you know, your mucosal system and your bronchi. And then normally you would just get rid of those virus particles. You'd mount an immune response. But what it does is because that one or two viruses as you breathe in will suddenly trigger an antibody response, which normally happens over two weeks. But then suddenly the antibody response will now activate and realize, oh my, this viral protein is in every cell of my body. So then the antibodies start attacking your cells and your organs. All right. So now you have Professor Dolores Cahill who says that it does get spliced into your DNA. As we see, many say it does not. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of you know, does it, does it not? And as we have seen, the evolutionary scenario is that it had to be spliced in, but the reality is that it's not spliced in, Yes. so they say. So which is it? It's a, again a question of choice, right? Correct. But what she does say here, which is interesting, is that when you breathe in a virus, it goes to your lungs. Mm -hmm. And normally then there is this immune response and your body eventually starts getting rid of the problem at that local level. Mm. When you inject the virus into your bloodstream, you're not actually following that route. No. You are putting it into the bloodstream and taking it to every so, cell yes. in the body. Mm. Where normally uh, it would not be the case. No. So now you have a response in your whole body. Now, let us see what other scientists are saying about this issue. So here is a whole group of doctors that are being, um, well, ostracized, and uh, their opinions are being criticized and even ridiculed in the media. Mm. But there are a number of medical people here that are very passionate about what they believe. So let's just have a brief look and see what they have to say. Hello, this is a World Freedom Alliance. We are here in Copenhagen and I've got the honor to introduce the core members from all over the world. We are the Great Resist and it's up to you and up to us to choose the world that we want to. Welcome to the World Freedom Alliance. Our message to the world is, you get what you accept, you have a choice, let us lead the way. We are the great resist, the World Freedom Alliance. We just had a huge victory. We were, uh, went out with pots and pans for two weeks and we managed in the first, time, first uh, round to, to defeat the uh, law on forced vaccinations. We'll keep on fighting until it's totally abolished. So come and join the rally. 
Saturday the 21st at 12 o'clock. See you there. Wake up Denmark. Wake up world. So those are all medical doctors and scientists. And they're very passionate about their view, right? So again, we are reiterating that there are two sides to the story and people will have to make a choice. Here's another article. This is quite a recent one. It comes from the 26th of December 2020 and this is Wochenblick. It's a, it's a German magazine and it is quoting Professor Sukarit Bhakti. He's also very prominent in the anti-vax circles. So what does this man have to say? Well, he claims that there are horror risks associated with the corona vaccine. So it's just another opinion. And he's talking about serious bodily damage. Now, what are his reasons? Well, again, this vaccine, he says, is not like any other vaccine. We've discussed that. It's a messenger RNA or a DNA one. And he says there will be side effects which will be very extreme. And now, this is just an opinion. So what are, the, what are the side effects that he's worried about? He says there is this danger of uh, autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And his point is that the vaccine is being taken to all parts of the body and there could be an autoimmune response. Now, in these autoimmune responses, the body then attacks its own cells mm -hmm. and destroys them. Well, a very simple example is diabetes type 1, where you have an autoimmune disease which attacks your own islets of lung hans and you no longer produce insulin, and then you have that autoimmune disease. Now, I'm not saying this is the same thing, mm -hmm. but he's saying it's a possibility. And can we guarantee that it's not a possibility? No. No. The people are saying the probability is very low. Very low. But, but <laughs> can we guarantee that it's not a possibility? No. So this dying of the body's cells will you know, affect the whole body, not just one thing. He says this could be the greatest catastrophe of all times. If you ask for trouble, you're going to get trouble. So this is an opinion of a, of a, a very highly mm. respected scientist who of course will also be yes. censored by the media he says this is not a inoculation but a genetic engineering and then he quotes that in china that this corona inoculation has led to many deaths so he's referring to some of the consequences that are not being mentioned in the media. Here's an article from CNBC. You can't sue Pfizer or Moderna if you have severe COVID vaccine side effects. The government likely won't compensate you for damages either. If you experience severe side effects after getting a COVID vaccine, lawyers tell CNBC there is basically no one to blame in a U.S. court of law. The federal government has granted companies like Pfizer and Moderna immunity from liability if something unintentionally goes wrong with their vaccines. Now, between the two of us, is this problematic? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a, a little red light that goes up. It's a little warning sign, right? Yeah. If they are so sure that nothing will go wrong, then why not put your money, money where your, where your mouth, mouth is? is. Hmm? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here is a government web page. And it talks about anaphylaxis following mRNA COVID-19 vaccine receipt. So this is an official source. Yeah, it's from the CDC. It's from the CBC. You're right. Now, anaphylaxis, what is that? That is a severe allergic, allergic response. Yeah. Okay. 
So what do their statistics tell us? Anaphylaxis in UK following COVID-19 vaccination. December 8, 2020, UK initiated vaccine vaccination with Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. December 9, UK authorities confirmed two cases of anaphylaxis after vaccination. Prescribing information for both Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines contains information on anaphylaxis. So you have severe allergic reactions to any component of the vaccine is a contraindication to vaccination. Appropriate medical treatment used to manage immediate allergic reactions must be immediately available in the event of an acute anaphylactic reaction recurs following administration of the vaccine. So these are recommendations. Mm -hmm. Now what were the actual results? Registrants with recorded first dose. So from December they started giving the doses and by December 18, 112,807 people had received the dose. Health impact events, there are two little stars there and it says there that uh, unable to perform normal daily activities, unable to work, required care from doctor or healthcare professionals. So these are people that had adverse reactions. And then out of these numbers, you can see that they are increasing from 3 to 50 to 373 to over 1,000, then to 3,115 out of 112. Mm. In other words, they had reactions that totally disabled them. Yeah, 2.7% if you work it out. Yes. So that is, that is quite alarming. Now they're talking about pregnancies, all right, that's not really uh, mm. relevant here, but uh, it's interesting that they are admitting that there are adverse reactions. But you know what, this is short term. What these other doctors were saying is, what are the long-term autoimmune responses? Yes. And the bottom line answer must be, we don't know. Exactly. And when it does happen, don't sue us. Mm -hmm because you can't sue us. So those are the risks involved. So where must the decision be made? I will go along with this. I will not go along with this. All right, where is the wolf and where is the, the victim, right? Yeah. Is the COVID-19 going to kill me mm -hmm. so that I really have to take this vaccine now? in order to survive? Or what is my probability of surviving the COVID-19 and then not having the worries about anything that could happen further down the line? Mm -hmm. That's a question, right? That's questions. And obviously, if there is something that's going to kill you in 10 minutes, you want to have some medication within five minutes. Correct. <laughs> Isn't that correct? <laughs> yes. So I'm not against allopathy. No. So if people say, well, people of prominence have used vaccines in the past, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they will necessarily use vaccines in the present, right? Correct. You know, it's like this argument that says, Jesus ate fish, Yes. so why shouldn't I eat fish? Mm -hmm. But what if down the line the fish is so polluted that it's no longer fit for human consumption? The question would then be, would Jesus say, let's go ahead and eat fish? Correct. I can't see it happening. All right. So we cannot use people of prominence in the past mm. to say that they took a vaccine. Have you had a vaccine in your life? Yes. Oh, I've had vaccines in my life because these vaccines just initiated my immune response because it wasn't in any way using my molecular machinery uh, at, the, at the genetic level to initiate a response. Mm -hmm. So, well, those are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Sky's News Australia YouTube channel has the following to say. University of Queensland's potential coronavirus vaccine with C cell has been abandoned after trial participants returned false positive HIV test results 
This was one of four vaccines which the Morrison government had entered into a deal with and is a blow to Australia's potential pool of vaccine options. Let's go live to Canberra now for some reaction with Tom Connell. Tom, good morning to you. It's a significant development. It is. So this is reported this morning from uh, Rob Harris in Nice Newspapers. This deal has been abruptly terminated. The timeline was this. On Monday, uh, CSL working with UQ found this issue. They informed the government by Thursday, National Cabinet had abandoned the use of the vaccine. There were 200 trial participants uh, in this vaccine. Several of them have returned false positives. That's important to stress, false positives for HIV. And sources, according to this story, are saying these people are not actually at risk. So how has this happened? Well, this vaccine actually uses a small component derived from HIV. So it's able to, um, it's used in the vaccine. It's not able to infect people nor replicate in the body. What it is able to do is uh, start a, a response within the body that can actually interfere the screening process and so that means return a false positive. We don't know how long the false positive, so this was always warned about. So no risk, and it was always a possibility. Again, they used a portion of that particular virus, and they're saying there's no risk. Now, that might be so. Uh, I, they see that they then continued with their, their trials afterwards again, after that had been cleared up. But I the have point, a question. Yeah. yeah, the point is just there are so many uncertainties, right? Okay. I don't understand. Maybe you can just explain to us what does this false positive mean? So if I go to, if I test positive now for HIV, how do they know it's not positive? If they say it's a false positive. Well, these people were not positive for HIV before the vaccine and were positive after the vaccine. So obviously it is as a consequence of the vaccine. But what if you hadn't been tested? Either, yeah. Then it could have been problematic. And for how long will you now pay, test positive for HIV? That is another question that has to be resolved. Okay. Now, Martin, there's another issue. These vaccines have to come in a number of doses because it is a step process. A first vaccination will only give you a partial immunity. Mm. And therefore, you need a second one so that you can come up to 95% immunity. Mm. And the question is, which vaccine did you receive the first time and which one are you going to receive the second time? So this is another issue that has come up. So let's listen to what Sky News had to say on this issue. Uh, it's all quite confusing, isn't it, Adele? Because you get the pharmaceutical companies saying, you know, there's plenty of this. There are no uh, capacity issues from our side. And yet it feels like our expectations are being managed that we, we might reach some pinch points with the availability of the vaccine. Yeah, conflicting reports mixed messages and overall a confusing picture is being painted here of a seemingly uh, unclear strategy from the government on this. And now this latest news that the UK government appears to have quietly updated its green book on vaccinations, saying that potentially vaccines can be mixed, as you say, so that anyone who is going for the second dose, if that dose is not available the same as the first dose that they had or their first dose it's not known exactly what they had then they will be able to mix they'll be able to have a different vaccine as their second dose now this flies in the face of guidance given in other countries such as the US which states that the that vaccines the different vaccines are not interchangeable and they're stating reasons of safety and efficacy because they simply have not yet been evaluated. There's even a quote in the New York Times from a world leading expert, expert in vaccines, John Moore from Cornell University, who describes this uh, from the UK government as seemingly to have abandoned science completely. He says that it seems like they're trying to guess their way out of a mess in his words. And of course, again, it raises questions over the decision to postpone second uh, doses for those who've already had one dose, their first dose of the Pfizer vaccination. The government stating that they want to maximise as many people as possible getting one dose of a vaccine to give some level of protection. And we have this statement, as you say, from Public Health England released within the last hour, uh, which 
basically the beginning of it starts to say that it does not recommend um, that uh, vaccines are interchangeable, but at the end it sort of paves the way for it. This is what it says. Uh, we do not recommend mixing the COVID-19 vaccines. If your first dose is the Pfizer vaccine, you should not be given the AstraZeneca vaccine for your second dose and vice versa. And this is where it changes a little. There may be extremely rare occasions where the same vaccine is not available or where it is not known what the patient received. Every effort should be made to give them the same vaccine. But where this is not available, it is better to give a second dose of another vaccine than not at all. So it does appear to be paving the way in some circumstances for vaccines to be mixed and matched, if you like. And on top of that, we have that confusing picture, as you mentioned. On the one hand, the government is saying that there could be a vaccine shortage. On the other, we have the drug companies saying that that's simply not the case. So whether or not it's a vaccine supply issue, whether or not there are also other reasons such as workforce capacity or a mixture of both of them. So if you have made a decision that you do not want the DNA one, but you will go with the mRNA one and you just get anyone, then uh, it's a bit problematic. But let's leave it at that. Now, there have been many reports of adverse reactions and there have been reports of people dying, some saying they all died of natural causes. As American authorities said, they are studying the case of a 32-year-old female doctor who was hospitalized after receiving the Pfizer vaccine. The ignition diagnosis was encephalomyelitis, the health ministry said in a statement released on Friday night. And encephalomyelitis is an inflammation of the brain and the spinal cord. Now here again you have a reaction which is directly in your nervous system. Mm. And uh, that could be quite a serious issue. And the question is, how did the vaccine affect the nervous system? Did it cross the blood-brain barrier? How did it get mm -hmm. into the nervous system? How did it target the nervous system? These are questions. Two, here's another one. 240 Israelis found with COVID after vaccination, underscoring need for vigilance. In other words, it doesn't immediately eliminate it. It takes time to do this. Mm -hmm. So they still tested positive for COVID even though they had the vaccination. And then we have another problem. Yes. And this is that this virus is mutating, mutating. at an incredible rate. Mm -hmm. And here is the Africa report, which says that the vaccine won't work against South Africa coronavirus variant, worry UK scientists. So the new variant of COVID in South Africa have caused renewed global concern in recent weeks, but the UK scientists now fear that it is the South African strain that causes the greatest risk as it may be impervious to the various vaccines that have been developed, including those of Pfizer and Moderna. Okay, let's just think about this. So everybody's rushing to get vaccinated, mm -hmm. and then the virus makes a switch, and then everything is null and void. Then you have to do this whole thing all oh, over uh -huh. again, right? And people are saying that the new variants are so much more contagious but they haven't spread at that alarming rate yet. So mm. how can you precisely determine how contagious they are? Mm. So there's a lot of hype. Yeah. And there's a lot of fear mongering that is going on to get people to respond. John Bell, Regius Professor of Medicine at Oxford University, told Times Radio that there was a big question mark over whether vaccines would work on the South African variant and that it might take months or six weeks to get a new vaccine. So it seems to me that people are in for a constant injection run. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like, yeah. You Correct. Can, so, so if you, in this case, now have had the first two shots, yes. you're going to need the new one as well for the new strain. 
Now, none of these vaccines, this is pure science, none of the vaccines have these nanorobots or anything of that nature in them. So this is purely a medical issue. But it seems that you will need to be updated as the strains change. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility that other technology could be introduced in vaccines if it ends up in the hands of people that uh, have other agendas? Mm -hmm. It's possible, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm not saying it is happening, but I'm saying there is a remote possibility that it could happen. Yes. All right, so there are also uh, vaccines that can be... Uh, given in another format mm -hmm. so that it actually leaves almost a barcode on your hand mm -hmm. so that you can be scanned and then you are basically branded like a product correct uh, are we products but that's that's something that needs to be dealt with in another conversation it further continues with South Africa's trade union federation, COSATU, has criticized the government for being caught napping on the vaccine rollout program. We are targeting a minimum of 67% of the population to achieve herd immunity, and the approach will be phased rollout of the vaccine beginning with the most vulnerable in our population. This question of herd immunity and the trade unions being involved. Mm. Now, we know that trade unions will be involved in end-time issues, right? Correct. So when you look at all of these things, you are looking at issues that, that gel with prophetic scenarios. Mm. And this issue of herd immunity. People are saying you must be inoculated so that a high percentage, some people say at least 75% of the population must be inoculated before you have herd immunity. Mm. And you need, others say, only 10 to 15% to achieve this herd immunity. So there is no, no consensus. Uh, consensus on what the percentage is. Now, if you've been inoculated, mm -hmm. And you are now immune to the virus. Yes. Am I a problem for you if I'm not, not vaccinated? No, that's uh, how I understand it. Then you're not a problem. If you, even if you have the virus, I'm now immune to it. Okay, so let's say you're traveling around in the world and you're going to an area where there is a problem, like yellow fever or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, you become inoculated and then you travel to that area. You yeah. actually get a certificate mm -hmm. which says that you are now basically immune against this disease and so now you off can go. you go. So if I understand correctly, you don't receive the vaccine to protect the people where you're going to. It's to protect you going there. Correct. That's how it normally works, yeah. right? So if this scenario is correct, then basically the country that you are going to should all be inoculated to have, Im have herd immunity so that you are safe going there. Going there without taking the uh, right. vaccine. So Let's if you are not inoculated, uh, then they will say, but you are a danger to them, but actually they are a danger to you. you. All right. Okay. So that debate is very strange <laughs> when you think about it. If everybody gets inoculated and some people choose not to be inoculated, then those that are inoculated shouldn't worry about those that are not inoculated, right? right? The risk lies with them. The risk lies with them. So again, it's a question of choice. Now, will there be penalties if you don't inoculate? The Daily Mail says public transport ban for anti-vaxxers in France. People who fail to get a COVID-19 vaccination could be banned from using public transport in France. So according to the text, which will now be submitted to Parliament, a negative COVID test or proof of preventive treatment, including the administration of a vaccine, could be required for people to be granted access to transport or to some locations as well as certain activities. So now we're talking about penalties. Mm -hmm. Here's another article. 
those who don't get COVID vaccine could face restrictions, Ontario officials say. So it's not just France. Yep. So you won't, they won't be mandatory, but those who don't receive a shot could face restrictions. We're heading in that direction. Mm -hmm. Is that coercion? Yes. Glo worldwide. Worldwide. New York Post. De Blasio urges New Yorkers to embrace COVID-19 vaccine at Bronx church service. The devil may be in the details, but he's not in the coming coronavirus vaccine, a Bronx city councilman and mayor, Bill de Blasio, said during a Sunday church service, vowing to show New Yorkers the shot is nothing to fear. I want to tell everyone you're not getting the 666 in this vaccine, okay? He continued invoking the biblical number of the beast. I want to tell you straight up, there is no 666. There's no conspiracy. I'll be the first one to get it if I'm allowed to. So the churches are involved. Mm -hmm. And there's this fear of 666. Now, we know that the vaccine has got nothing to do with 666. But this number 666 is interesting, right? It is the number of the beast. Yes. And there are three sixes. And Babylon has three components. Mm -hmm. There's the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And I wonder whether they collectively <laughs> mm -hmm. have a number, right? Correct. So, yes, religion is involved in some way or other. And my question is, should religion be allowed to dictate to your individual conscience no okay mail online Cuma gets tough on go slow new york vaccine rollout government threatens a hundred thousand dollar fines if hospitals do not use vaccine allocations by the end of the week so they're basically forcing the institutions to get on with it and do yes. it okay I want needles in arms and I want it done as quickly as possible, Cuomo said. What's the rush, the pandemic? Mm. Now here is the Jesuit magazine and everybody knows that uh, when the Jesuits involved, are involved, my antenna go up. Yes. And the history of the Jesuit order is enough to make my antenna go up and should be enough to make everybody's, everybody's. antenna mm -hmm. go up. Some Americans are skeptical about taking a COVID vaccine. Could religious leaders convince them? One group of people who could help encourage vaccination is faith leaders who have the ability to reach communities that might otherwise be skeptical. So now here not only the government mm -hmm. is using tactics to force people in a direction, now the Jesuits are asking the churches of the yes. world to do the same. Yes. That makes my antenna go up. De definitely. The vital role of religious leaders is going to be the framing and meaning of protecting oneself and protecting others. It's going to be bigger and a similar job to the mask challenge. While most Americans appear willing to get vaccinated against COVID-19, there is still resistance, including from some Catholic leaders. Earlier this year, two Catholic bishops published misinformation about the origin of the two vaccines created by Pfizer and Moderna, claiming that Catholics should not take the vaccine because they were created using fetal stem cells acquired through abortion. That led to the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops to distribute a memo, memo to all U.S. bishops reiterating church teaching around vaccines and stating Catholics should have no moral qualms about using the two vaccines in question. Now, we didn't even discuss in this discussion whether fetal cells were used yeah. and what the morality is of that issue. We were just looking at the basic science of what actually happens when yeah. you take the vaccine. 
So this is another issue which we don't have to bring into this debate right now. No. This discussion is just showing you you've got a choice. You have a choice. That's all it's about. Now, in his Christmas message, Pope Francis urges coronavirus vaccines for all. So the churches are on board, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying you must take this. The Vatican earlier this month said the use of coronavirus vaccines is morally acceptable even if some vaccines are manufactured using cell lines from aborted fetuses and their research and production process. I cannot place myself ahead of others. Letting the law of the marketplace and patents take precedence over the law of love and the health of humanity, Francis said. I ask everyone, government leaders, business, international organizations to foster cooperation and not competition and to seek a solution for everyone, vaccines for all, especially for the most vulnerable and needy of all regions of the planet. So he wants vaccines for all. Here's CTV News. Pope criticizes people going on holiday to flee COVID-19 lockdowns. He condemned on Sunday people who had gone abroad on holiday to escape coronavirus lockdowns, saying they needed to show greater awareness for the suffering of others. I guess we must all suffer the same, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what 2021 will reserve for us, but what all of us can do together is make a bit more of an effort to take care of each other. There is the temptation to take care only of our own interests, he added. Now, basically where he's going, he's saying that if you don't get vaccinated, you are a danger to others. Correct. And this is what we discussed a minute ago. Yes. When you go to, you know. Yeah. So this is exactly where we're heading, that you are a danger to the society, society if you don't get this. So here is America again, the, the Jesuit Review. New Vatican document refusing to get vaccinated can seriously jeopardize public health. So the Roman Catholic Church is seriously mm -hmm. pushing vaccination. And it's not a matter of choice. No. The document highlights the critical role of vaccines to defeat the pandemic not just for individual personal health, but to protect the health of all, the Vatican said in a statement accompanying the document. They are absolute experts on everything, these Jesuits. It's amazing, huh? Correct. <laughs> Pope Francis established the COVID-19 Commission in April with the goal of expressing the Church's concern and love Due to the close interdependence between personal and public health, the Commission and the Pontifical Academy warned that refusing to take the vaccine may also constitute a risk to others. Given the absence of an alternative vaccine that is not either developed from or tested on the results of a voluntary abortion, the document emphasized that the vaccines currently available are morally acceptable and that moral objections one may use to refuse vaccination are non-binding. The document continues. Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, head of the Pontifical Academy for Life, said his office is working with the Commission to address the ethical issues regarding the vaccine's development and distribution. The joint document reiterated the points made December 21 by the Congregation for Doctrine of the Faith regarding the moral implications of receiving COVID-19 vaccines that were developed or tested using cell lines originating from aborted feces. Now, let me just stop there. Mm. Who is this congregation for the doctrine of the faith? This is the organization within the Roman Catholic Church that studies and determines issues of doctrine that are binding eventually if ratified upon all. Mm -hmm. So there's a small organization of their theologians who make the decision whether something is moral or not mm -hmm. 
and then ratified by the Pope, it becomes binding by, for all. For, the, for all the church members. Correct. Now, such an organization, uh, the previous Pope, before he became Pope Ratzinger, was the head of the congregation for the doctrine and the faith. Mm. So there are s churches that have small bodies that make decisions for many people. And here is now a religious body that is determining the ethics behind it. And the current one that Pope Francis um, appointed is a Jesuit as well. Yes. It also cited the congregation's 2008 instruction, Dignitas Personae, which states that grave reasons may be morally proportionate to justify the use of such biological material. The Pontifical Academy for Life, the document said, also has addressed the issue of developing vaccines using tissue from aborted fetuses. So these are now moral issues within the church. Mm -hmm. But then it states, the document quoted Pope Francis, who said in his Christmas message that humanity could not allow the virus of radical individualism to get the better of us and make us indifferent to the suffering of other brothers and sisters. Nor could it allow the law of the marketplace and patents take precedence over the law of love and the health of humanity. So there are two issues. Mm -hmm. The papacy seeks control over the marketplace yeah. and over the individual. Correct. It has the right, through its structures, to dictate to the individual what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. To, be, to make your own choice is actually a virus. It's a virus. It's a virus. It must be eradicated. Uh, Thomas Aquinas already said that such a disease should be amputated. You see. <laughs> it should be amputated. So the virus of individualism is a problem to this structure, the Roman mm. Catholic Church. It has always been a problem to it, and it always will be a problem. It excommunicated Martin Luther as a virus to their system. And now that they have conquered Protestantism through the ecumenical movement, they will reunite and probably declare him a non-virus in the near future. Yes. We will see what will happen, will happen in this year. This is as much a religious war mm -hmm. as it is a medical issue. Yes, because now he says no individualism. No individualism. But what we've seen in the previous articles, the way the governments are handling the vaccine, you don't have a choice either. You don't have a choice. So they're, they're, they're singing the tune of the Vatican. You know, Brother Martin, this issue of control is a very serious one. Mm -hmm. And it permeates all of humanity. Here's a statement in Testimonies to Ministers. A strange thing has come into our churches. Men who are placed in position of responsibility that they may be wise helpers to their fellow workers have come to suppose that they were set as kings and rulers in the churches. To say to one brother, do this, to another, do that, and to another, be sure to labor in such and such a way. There have been places where the workers have been told that if they did not follow the instructions of these men of responsibility, their pay from the conference would be withheld. There's this possibility of this spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist, mm. to permeate the whole system. We have to be so careful. In his labors, this comes from the re Review and Herald, in his labors, each worker is to look to God. We are to labor as men and women who have a living connection with God. We are to learn how to meet the people where they are. Let not such conditions exist as we found in some places when we returned to America, in which individual church members, instead of realizing their responsibility, look to men for guidance, and men to whom have been committed sacred and holy trusts in carrying forward the work, failed of understanding the value of personal responsibility, 
and took upon themselves the work of ordering and dictating what their brethren should do or should not do. These are things that God will not allow in his work. He will put his burdens upon his burden bearers. Every individual soul has the responsibility before God and is not to be arbitrarily instructed by men as to what he shall do, what he shall say, and where he shall go. We are not to put confidence in the counsel of men and assent to all they shall say unless we have evidence that they are under the influence of the Spirit of God. Mm. Nobody has the right to tell you what your conscience should dictate to you. Yes. That is the spirit of Antichrist. And the papal system is Antichrist. Whether Protestantism wishes to return to it or not, that is their decision. But the Bible has not changed. changed. It's not only in the church, but in the workplace as well. Nobody can dictate to you what you should do. I'll take an example. I don't drink anymore. So if you require me to start drinking again to work here, then I'm going to say sorry. Then I have to make an, another choice. Well, that happened to me when I stopped drinking. Family member of mine said to me, if you no longer will drink with me, then our relationship is over. Yeah. Well, that's the choice. That's a choice. So you have to stand by your choice. You have to stand by your that's choice. That's what the bottom line. Now, I also want to make it quite clear. We have given information on both sides of the story. We have told no one to vaccinate or not, not to, to vaccinate. vaccinate. It's but just information. And some people on the one side will say that the information on the other side has to be debunked and vice versa. Mm. But the choice eventually lies with the, the individual. individual. Here is a quote from General Conference Bulletin. The plans upon which God wishes us to work have been laid down. Never should the mind of one man or the minds of a few men be regarded as sufficient in wisdom and power to control the work and say what plans shall be followed. The burden of the work in this broad field should not rest upon two or three men. So the Congregation for Doctrine and Faith, which is a few men dictating to the entire body, body. Uh, what they should do, is not in the order of God, and neither is it in the order of God in any institution, no matter what kind. Mm -hmm. No one should lean wholly upon another's mind. But as God's free agent, each should ask wisdom of him. When the learner depends on a large degree upon another man's thoughts and goes no further than to accept his plans, he sees only through that man's eyes and is so far only an echo of the other. God will by his own spirit work directly through the mind he has put in man. If the man will only give him chance to work and will recognize his dealings with him, God designs that men shall use their minds and consciences for themselves. He never designed that one man should become the shadow of another and utter only another's sentiments. But this error has been coming in amongst us that a very few are to be mind, conscience and judgment for all God's workers. The foundation of Christianity is Christ our righteousness, Men are individually responsible to God and must act as God acts upon them, not as another human mind acts upon their mind. For if this method of indirect influence is kept up, souls cannot be impressed and directed by the great I Am. They will, on the other hand, have their experience blended with another and will be kept under a moral restraint which allows no freedom of action or of choice. We cannot allow the spirit of Antichrist to dictate to us what we should do or what we should believe. Mm -hmm. You know, Martin, in our church even, 
There have come in so many diverse views and some people are so militant for their view and so determined that everybody must see it exactly as they see it or they will decry them as lost individuals mm -hmm. with no chance of salvation. If we were to adopt the right attitude and allow freedom of conscience, then God would be able to work with every individual. In his labor, each worker is to look to God. We are to labor as men and women who have a living connection with God. We were bought with a price. Yes. I don't belong to the Pope. I don't belong to the Jesuits. I don't belong to any man on this earth. I have been bought with a price. Yes. And the decisions that I make in my life must be determined with, through my connection with God. I can listen to the advice of men. Correct. I have no problem with some, someone saying, in my opinion, mm -hmm. it is safe to take this vaccine. But I have no right to say you should take it or you are a danger to someone else. Correct. In my opinion, you should not take the vaccine, is the other view, mm. for these and these reasons. But I have no right to dictate to you Correct. that you should not take the vaccine. And this is what it is about. This is what we are talking about Correct. today. And that is where the problem of what is happening is showing its red light. There is a lot of dictating, telling you this is what you should do. Exactly. And we have a clash of philosophies. Because we have very clear directives from God as to how we should approach disease. Mm. Stay away from drugs is an admonition that we have. And uh, if we want to choose to go God's route, then that is our right. And it mm. is the duty of everyone to respect that right. I think people have lost sight of the real issue. And we need to go back to the Bible and we can glean some information from the Spirit of Prophecy. Now here I have Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4. And I just want to read a few passages, if I may. You may. I may? <laughs> it says here quite clearly that Romanism is now regarded, this is on page 380, Romanism is now regarded by Protestants with far greater favor than in former years. Mm. As we said, this year, the Ecumenical Council might just complete the work. They're waiting for the Jubilee. They always wait for a Jubilee. It can't be done on another day, you know. <laughs> there is an increasing indifference concerning the doctrines that separate the Reformed churches from the papal hierarchy. The opinion is gaining ground that after all we do not differ so widely upon vital points as have been supposed. Here is an organization that absolutely denies the atonement yes. and places priests and prelates and saints mm -hmm. in the position of Jesus Christ and we call it a Christian institution and we mingle with them. So the opinion is gaining ground that after all we do not differ so widely upon vital points as has been supposed. And that a little concession on our part will bring us into a better understanding with Rome. The time was when Protestants placed a high value upon the liberty of conscience which has been so dearly purchased. They taught their children to abhor mm -hmm. popery. We're not abhorring the, the people. In the individual. We abhor the doctrines, doctrines. and what they stand for and held that to remain at peace with Rome would be disloyalty to God. But how widely different are the sentiments now expressed. And then 
it warns on the next page, let the restraints now imposed by secular governments be removed and Rome be reinstated in her former power and there would speedily be a revival of her tyranny and persecution. Have you seen words of that nature? Absolutely. And have we seen in previous episodes and all of that, the governments that exactly did exactly that what you've just read? They are read? on the same page. They, they have given the that page. authority back to Rome. Absolutely. She states on page 382, the Roman church is far-reaching in her plans and modes of operation. It's interesting to me that she is using the right arm, mm -hmm. the health message, to enforce compliance to her decrees, which will eventually go over to Sunday legislation when it comes to climate change legislation, yeah. which is next on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But people are being programmed to obey the dictates no matter what. what. But she is employing every device to extend her influence and increase her power in preparation for a fierce and determined conflict to regain control of the world, to re-establish persecution and to undo all that Protestantism has done. We are there. Oh, uh, the, um, just to put that in other, in other words, what happens now if you don't go along with wearing your mask or getting the vaccine? We've seen the, the articles. You are... Uh, Branded. Yes, and you don't get uh, all the privileges and all of the, so you're actually absolutely getting forced to take it, or otherwise the consequences will be dire. Absolutely. Well, there's lots that we can read here. Let me read one more statement here. But God will have a people upon the earth to maintain the Bible and the Bible only as the standard of all doctrine and the basis of all reforms, and also the basis of my decisions, the opinions of learned men, the deductions of science, the creeds or decisions of ecclesiastical councils, mm -hmm. as numerous and discordant as are the churches with which they represent, the voice of the majority, not one or all of these should be regarded as evidence for or against any point of religious faith before a plain thus says the Lord in its support. This is page 413. My brother, this is an issue which has religious ramifications whether we like it or not. Correct. Here's another quote. Christ foresaw that the undue assumption of authority practiced by the scribes and the Pharisees would not cease with the dispersion of the Jews. He had a prophetic view of the work of exalting human authority to rule the conscience, which has been so terrible a curse to the church in all ages. And his fearful denunciation of the scribes and the Pharisees and his warnings to the people not to follow these blind leaders were placed on record as an admonition to future generations. These are serious issues. Mm -hmm. This is where we are in the stream of time. It says here on page 416, with divine help. Well, let me read a little more. Let me start from ignorance of God's word is sin. Mm. When every provision has been made that we may become wise, we should day by day study the Bible diligently, weighing every thought and comparing Scripture with Scripture. With divine help, we are to form our opinion for ourselves. Yes as we are to answer for ourselves before God. When the Pope talks about the virus of individualism, mm -hmm. he is the enemy of everything scriptural. Amen. He's the enemy of God. He is the Antichrist. 
Our reason why many theologians have no clearer understanding of God's word is they close their eyes to truths which they do not wish to practice. So what is our bottom line? Here is the Guardian and it says, The World Health Organization warns COVID-19 pandemic is not necessarily the big one. Martin, we've been saying all along this is a stepping stone. Yep. Do you still stand by that? Oh, 100%. This is not going to go away. This is going to escalate in the culmination of prophecy. No matter what ecclesiastical body mm -hmm. tries to prevent it, they're not going to succeed. So Martin, our voices, in the light of this is not the big one, we're going for that final push. What does that mean to the voice? Must it be lifted up like a trumpet or mm. must it go out in a whimper? Must it become a loud cry? It must become a loud cry. The world needs to know where this is heading. This is the conflict with the God of heaven. Correct. The opinion of man as opposed to the dictates of God. And nobody, nobody should have the right to silence that voice of warning in the time that we are living in. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to r the right to say that we may not call the institution that the reformers pointed out as the enemy of all righteousness. Nobody has the right to say that ecumenism has reversed this situation. Nothing has changed. The Bible is absolutely accurate in what it is saying. And I will say one thing, uh, and I may <laughs> come as a shock to people, uh, this pandemic has been very severe. It's been it's spread around the world uh, extremely quickly and has affected every corner of this planet. But this is not necessarily the big one. This virus is very transmissible, but uh, and it, it kills people and it has deprived so many people of loved ones. But its uh, current case fatality uh, is re reasonably low in comparison to other emerging diseases. This is a wake-up call. We are learning now how to do things better how to do science better, how to do logistics better, how to do uh, training better, how to do governance better, how to communicate better. We've developed a whole new science of infodemiology and advanced behavioral science in this way. So I think uh, for, from our perspective, uh, the planet is fragile. Uh, we live in an increasingly complex global society. These threats will continue. If there's one thing we need to take from this pandemic with all of the tragedy and loss, is that we need to get our act together. We need to get ready for something that may even be more severe in future. You know, Martin, that logo with the serpent around the pole, Asclepius, that serpent has more to say than just medical things. We have to beware of that serpent. So, 2021, started off with a bang. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is that a decision will have to be made. And if this is just the forerunner, then the real decision is just around the corner. Yes. I believe it with all my heart. And I want to encourage the viewers to study the Word of God, to study the issues carefully, prayerfully, together with God, and to individually decide where we want to stand in terms of this issue. May God help us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the world is teetering on a knife edge. That power that has slain the saints of God over the centuries is rising up to assert its power in the time that we are living in. And Lord, prophecy is fulfilling before our eyes and we pray for individual wisdom to deal 
with the questions at hand. We thank you that you are a God that has saved us individually. And we pray for your protection and guidance in this issue. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching this video. To subscribe to our channel, click here. To get notifications, click on the bell. To watch the next video, click here. Thank you and we'll see you again.